Welcome to part two of painting a huge painting. Where did we leave at? We left, yes, I finished a big painting for a friend, which was kind of a practice for me. We ended up with this painting also, which was left unfinished. So today I would like to work on this one. And I received some new paints, the Schmicke Hardem Super Granulating Paints. I'm so excited. I am so excited. So today we will test them out for sure. Now I have two options, two papers that I want to try. I want to try this watercolor block that I got recently as well. If you want to know more about these new art supplies that I got recently, you can go see my latest art haul on my channel. It's my biggest so far. And I'm so excited. So today we're off, we're going to try a bunch of new art supplies. So this is a very exciting day. I think we are like one step closer to painting the huge painting I want to create. I want to use this paper right here. And also I want to use the paper that I cut already that you saw me cut in my last vlog of this series. I'm going to show you, I have well this paper. I have different sizes. I'm gonna try to find a way to work on a couple of these at the same time. I have not stretched the paper and I don't think I will because last time I did stretch it and it did not do anything. It's no use. So let's just tape it on the surface and work. So I'm going to create a couple of different paintings and while they dry, I'm going to work on salvaging this one. I don't know if you can see, but I tried something new with my eyeliner. This look was inspired by Radia Rahman. So thank you for that. I think I like it. Anyway, I feel very fancy, very funky today. Here I have two different kinds of paper. The paper that sorry, the paper that I bought recently, which is the same grams per meter as this one, but this is way thinner. I'm very confused about that. So we have this one and I did some cleaning up in my studio and I found some paper that I had cut. And these are like standard sizes. Well, at least this one, I think it's a, an eight by 10. And I have smaller sizes here as well. So even more papers for me to play with. This is exciting. Now I need to tape this paper and I am also going to unwrap this paper here. Can't wait to see what it looks like, what it feels like. And then we're gonna have some fun with my new paints. I'm going to keep this plastic to use to create texture. Okay, so I prepped many boards. I have this one for a nine by 14 inches, I think. I have this one, which contains lots of different sizes. And I've put like a ridge in between. So when I flip the boards to let the paint flow, the paint won't get from one paper to another. And finally, I have this which I'm going to use to create a painting. That's nice because I'm going to be able to try out a lot of my new paints. So can't wait to get started. 
All right, so before starting to paint, I want to choose which colors I'm going to use. So what I found out with my tests is that I prefer a darker, interesting color with something lighter like buff titanium. So I'm looking at my new swatches right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put aside the colors that I want to be featured in my painting. So this one, Tundra Violet is amazing i mean look at this this is only one tube so there's amazing color separation in there that i think is just gonna be amazing <laughs> i know i keep saying this but this is the only word for it so this is the tube i'm gonna put it aside for one painting the deep sea violet is very interesting as well and the tundra pink so let's put these aside For, for later and I'd like to explore either with the Shire blue or the forest blue I think I'm gonna do both honestly forest blue might be a bigger painting and the Shire blue a smaller one I think because I always tend to like muted colors a bit better so I think Either way, I'm going to use all of them. And the desert green. Oh, I need to use this one. This, it's so nice. Desert green, yes. So, in fact, I've used all of these except the tundra blue, which I also feel like is very nice. I like the potter's pink too. But I feel like on its own, it's not enough. Maybe like these two could be interesting together. Okay, I finished my choice and I took a little piece of paper and I put the name of the color I wanted for this specific painting. So I have all my colors planned already. So I think we can start working. I hope the lighting is not going to be too weird in this video. It's just that today's a really great day. It's raining outside. Usually during the day, I only use the natural light, but I feel it won't be enough so I turned on the light in my studio and it's a lot yellower so I hope it won't be too bad on my paintings we'll see okay but it's either that or we don't paint and that's impossible <laughs> so let's start working
Okay, so I did the first layer of all of my paintings, which is very exciting. I think I've discovered new techniques to use. We'll see if it's beautiful, but I've tried doing finer lines so I can show you the evolution of what I did, okay? So first I worked on this one and well, all of these. This one was the last that I did. So you can see that all my strokes are pretty large. They're kind of like big blobs of color. And in this one, I kind of only did only small lines and I thought it was super pretty because the paint really spread and you could really see how, how well it spread. So I really like that. I decided that I would try to mix the two techniques. So mix big strokes, big blobs of colors with thinner lines and see what happens. So that's what I did. This is what happened and I really like it. I think it's so pretty. So after that, I applied the same technique to the other big painting that I did. And I think this one and the last one that you saw me paint, they're my favorites. So I can't wait to, for it to dry. I'm gonna remove the salt and then do a second layer with the plastic on top. But now I'm gonna work on the other painting that I wanted to save. We'll see if we can do something pretty with it or not. It already looks better. Once the tape is off, I have a better, a better vision of it. At first, when I painted it, my idea was to do a horizontal painting, but I think it looks much better vertically because you can really see that the flow is like this. Let's see what... No, this doesn't work that way in this direction. I feel like it feels heavier on the bottom, so it makes sense that this part is the bottom of the painting. And you can kind of see that the white drips towards the bottom. I don't know, it's kind of, it's just a feeling that I have that it's better this way. So now we'll work on adding some texture to it using some pens and pencils. I have this. This is useless. Let's not use this one. I like the multiple layers that you can see, especially in this part. There's a lot of depth to it, so I find this super pretty. I had a charcoal pen that I find really useful. I can't find it. Show me. Where is it? I saw it earlier today. I put it somewhere. My first paintings on the wood board, the four paintings that I created, they're dried. I removed the salt, so I'm gonna be starting the second layer. I hope everything goes well. Um, and yeah, so wish me luck. <laughs> I'm a bit stressed out, I don't know if you can tell. One day I'm gonna have to focus on redoing the studio. I might have to get rid of these tables here and find a better setup because I'm always, I'm, I'm not 
in front of the window because one table finishes right in the middle of the window and the other table starts. So I can never be like fully centered. Usually it's fine, but when we have these kinds of days where it's really dark outside, it's raining, then light becomes really precious and I feel like I'm losing a bit of light on the far side, you know? So one day I will redo my studio, but it seems like a big task. So one day though, one day. Especially because we want to stay in this apartment for at least another year at least so probably for another two years so maybe i should think of a setup that works better for me i'm starting to think about it but for now let's paint well oh my god Okay, so now I'm starting with some water and I'm being careful not to apply too much pressure because I don't want the paint that's already there to reactivate too much. See here, it's reactivated a little bit. I'm trying to avoid that. But I'm gonna put new paint on top, so hopefully it's gonna be okay. And first I'm gonna put a little bit of titanium buff again in some places I'm not sure what's happening because there's a lot of warping. I definitely could not use this paper to create my big painting, the one I wanted to create. This is not going to be an option. Well, I knew that already, but I think this is just a confirmation because this is creating things that I don't like. Well, I hope that I can use this to my advantage if possible i'm gonna try to put some really dark spots of this all right now we'll see let's put some white Now we're gonna put a plastic on top and hope for the best. Okay, I think after these two I need a break. I need to see what happens before I move on to the others because it's... I need to see. I just need to see, Do am I putting too much white? Am I... Am I... I don't know. I need to see. So I'm gonna let these dry and another day i'm gonna do these two okay now let's try to take this plastic off and oh my god my god not 
sure. Oh, I'm not sure I like it. Oh, no, 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 no. I wasn't able to keep it simple and that's why it's like there's no flow in it because there's paint everywhere. So I think the second one here is going to have the same problem. I want to try it again with the same paint because I love this paint. I love this color. So I'm hoping the second attempt will be better than the first. Okay, so I did these two, which I don't particularly like. I think that the problem I had with these is that I wanted to put paint everywhere. I think that this one in the background here is much better because I restrained myself. I let clear areas for darker and lighter colors. Uh, but in here, like the dark and the light, they just mix together and they there's no flow in these. That's why I don't part I don't like them that much, especially this one. I think I like this one better. I think I can do something with it once I add some pencils and some pens, some mark making. Uh, uh, this one, I'm not sure. I'll try. I also don't like this paper. You see, I don't know if you can see. It warped a lot and it's, it is still warped. Yeah, not a fan, not a big fan. I really want to work on one of the big paintings that I have because I like them much better and I feel more inspired by them. I want to try to do something with them. So I think I'm going to work on these first. I think this is fine. Let's put a little bit of white. Just to emphasize some lighter spots that we already can see in the painting. Oh. I prefer maybe adding some later and just maybe a tiny bit of gold. I have a better feeling for this one already. All right, so let's put the tape, the, the plastic, sorry. And we will let it flow a little bit. I think that I like this one. It has potential. I think I was more loose with my brush strokes and I, I'm pretty sure the result is going to be cool. So I'm, I want to work on this one now. Following the same logic of not overdoing it. And for this one, I'm not going to put any gold because you can see how the color separates and it's kind of like a copper color. 
so I think it doesn't need any gold. I would like, now I'm thinking about how to have this painting flow. I definitely don't want to leave like these two lines uncovered. I think maybe if I put a wash of blue like this, and potentially another one like this, all blue here. Friends, my sweet little babies. A couple of days have passed since I painted my big paintings. At first when I looked at them, I was really disappointed. I did not really like them. But now after a couple of days, uh, I think I changed my mind. So we have this one, which at first I painted to be on this side, but I really like it better on this side. So we're gonna remove the tape and then add some details, but I really like it. And the paper is flat. I don't get it. Well, we'll take it. Then I did this one. And after adding the second layer, I didn't like it because I thought it was too... I thought I worked on it too much. I thought it wasn't simple enough, but now that I look at it, I like it too. So I'm gonna add some details. Um, for this one, the paper is a bit buckled. Uh, when I'm done, I'm gonna put it under a weight and I hope that it's gonna become flatter. But anyways, it's supposed to be framed. So I don't think anybody's gonna notice. And then, okay, so when I did these two, these two that I just showed you, uh, and I did not like them at first. I kind of panicked and I did another one just in one layer. I did not do this first step and then a second step. I just did one layer out of sheer panic. And this is what happened, which I also like, but I think that I need to add maybe another layer because I want to add some more movement. I think that this lighter part in the middle, it's too equal, like the width, it's too, it's too equal in all of the painting and I don't like that, but I like the colors. So I thought about what I could do. I did a sketch and procreate just to have a general idea. So I think we're gonna work on that today, on these three paintings and the two little paintings that we did in practice, these two. And after, really, I think that we're getting closer to being able to work on the final painting. I want to do more practice with the bigger paper because what I found out is that when I work on a big paper, there's an added difficulty because my brush, my biggest brush is not that big really. 
it's this one it's a size four i think i might have bigger brushes but this one is my best one it's the one that holds the most paint the most water so this is the one that i use and it's hard to paint on a big surface with a small brush like this one i want to practice some more i want to figure out if i need to buy a bigger brush because good brushes bigger than this they get expensive but if i plan on doing more paintings like this and selling them then it's a good investment i just need to think about it and do some more tests so let's work and um, maybe i could do a fit check i don't do these a lot but i find my outfit very cute today so i'm going to show you what i'm wearing this beautiful pink sweater with like i love the neckline and i have like casual but professional pants with a little i don't know how you call it so i think i look like a very fancy baby with my rings and earrings yeah i'm gonna show you what i thought i could do in procreate so here is the painting and on the side it's a bit darker but you see that i added like a line like this some more interesting shapes compared to this one where there's just like one dark side one light side one dark side and that's it it's super simple i feel like this one it adds more interest more movement so i think i'm gonna try that wish me luck I'm doing some tests in Procreate to figure out what I want to do as far as mark making. Since these are big paintings, I feel like I have to plan things out a little bit. And once I decide on um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it on paper. I think I like it. 
though I don't think I'll be able to finish it today because I really want it to be like super dry before I add some lines and whatnot. But I think that what I added, it created more dimension, a uh, better flow. So I'm done. I will let it dry and I'll have a better look at it tomorrow. Okay, my friends, I think that this is the end of the second vlog of the series. I learned a lot, I think, in this vlog. I painted some really pretty paintings, I think, and I had quite a big moment of panic. When I painted these paintings, I kind of panicked because at first I really didn't like them. I thought I had lost my way. I thought the process was too random to be worth it. And I thought I would just waste my paints, waste my paper, because it's uncontrollable. And it turns out it is uncontrollable, but there's a way to save the paintings or to bring them back to where you want them to be after and before. You know, there's many steps you can take to modify a painting. And I've learned that the most with this one because at first I really, I don't know, I thought it was too simple. I thought there wasn't a good enough flow. I thought the contrast wasn't good enough. So I really played with this one. Procreate was really useful because I took a picture of it and I drew some ideas of how I could modify this one to create something that was, well, to create a better painting. And so because of that, I was able to save this painting. And I think that this one might be one of my favorites I've created so far. I think in this vlog, I learned a lot about the process of creating the paintings. And it was a lot of internal work as well. I learned that I had to relax and I had to accept how the painting would turn out. I think I had to let go of the control I have when I usually paint. I had to accept that the painting will do things that I have not planned, but that's okay. And I can always add more layers on top to modify it, to save it if I need to save it. And also I learned that I have to let my painting breathe. I don't want to slap paint and color on the whole paper. I want to leave some areas for lighter shades so that both light and dark can play together and can have their own spaces. I think that this is what creates a better flow. Now, if you may remember, I still had two tiny paintings to paint. So I think we're gonna finish that together. Um, these are gonna be the last few clips of this vlog. So I'm gonna leave you now. We're gonna paint these last two tiny paintings. I hope that you enjoyed this vlog. If you did, please leave me a like, please leave me a comment and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I would love to have you back on my channel. Please like, subscribe, comment, share my channel with your mom, with your dad, uh, with your cousin. So um, let's spread the word. Laurence is here and she needs friends. So, all right. So thank you again. I appreciate every comment you leave me. I appreciate every view that I get. And without further ado, let's just paint a little bit, put some nice music on and end this vlog on a good note. I hope. <laughs>